Akin now in South Africa, where the central bank today released the financial stability report. Uh, the sec that's the second edition of the, uh, the stability forum for the year 2024, the first was done in June. The report provides our insights into the state of South Africa's financial system, the regulatory environment, and key macroeconomic uh, metrics of the country since the last report was released uh, the first half of the year. Let's take excerpts from the SCRB Governor, Leseja Kegango. We identify and analyze six risks to domestic financial stability. This will be unpacked in the presentation, uh, but to summarize, they are, you guessed it right, escalating global conflicts, deteriorating public sector debt ratios, rapid capital outflows amid declining financial market debt, increased financial distress in households and small enterprises, critical infrastructure failure, and remaining on the FATF gray list over the medium term. We also identify certain long-standing or structural risks, such as South Africa's low and inequitable economic growth, the implications of climate change, for the financial sector and the ever-present risks of cyber attacks disrupting the financial system. There are also a few other interesting pieces of content in this FSR which I would like to draw your attention to. First, we are introducing a revised residual and vulnerability matrix, or the RVM, which aligns the South African Reserve Bank's financial stability monitoring and assessment framework with the approach of the Financial Stability Board. The RVM summarizes the vulnerability of the financial system to key financial stability risks after taking into consideration both mitigating and amplifying factors. The main message we are conveying here is that in aggregate, our regulated financial institutions remain resilient as measured by their ability to maintain adequate capital and liquidity buffers to absorb shocks. Second, we describe a new financial conditions index for South Africa. The goal of the financial conditions index is to summarize through a single index how easy it is for firms, households, and government to access finance. We have used FCIs for some time, but this last iteration is intended to simplify and to also be more inclusive, hopefully giving us a strong shared starting point for evaluating financial conditions. For those of you who are interested in the methodological details, we are also publishing a paper on our website detailing the new uh, index. Third, we have some analysis of the counter-cyclical capital buffer, which we are moving to 1% over the course of next year. This decision, which was first announced a year ago, is intended to achieve what we call a positive cycle neutral capital buffer. The FSR starts off by summarizing key global developments and risks that could have spillover effects to the financial system in South Africa. In the period since the previous FSR, geopolitical conflicts... <laughs> can't say this now anymore. <laughs> have escalated and the record, record number of countries have had elections, in many cases resulting in a change of government or coalition governments. There are growing concerns about ballooning public debt levels globally, which now stand at 94% of global GDP and expected to reach 100% of global GDP by 2030. That's according to the IMF. Policy divergence among advanced economy, economies seems more and more likely. All of these factors result in heightened uncertainty, a high sensitivity to economic news and financial market volatility. 
The graph on the left, uh, you don't have to worry about what is what, but it generally shows how several volatility indicators have increased since the beginning of the year. On the right, it shows the expected interest rate decreases in advanced economies, supporting some easing in global financial conditions.